Today we're going to learn how to use sample nearest surface and the difference with sample index and sample nearest. So let's see. Let's do the camera, the light, go to the nodes, let's hide this panel and this one. Let's create a new profile, delete this and add a grid. Let's connect it, make it bigger and let's add more vertices. Something like that. Now, here we have a grid with different elements. Remember, elements can be vertices, points, edges, faces. And now, first of all, let's add another object. So, for example, an icosphere. Let's add joint geometry. So we can join both geometries. And let's make it smaller, something like that. And add more subdivision. Okay, perfect. Now, I want to move this icosphere. So we need set position. So I can offset it in any axis. However, let's see first, before we understand how sample near surface works, we need to know how sample index works to see the little difference. So if I want to send this object in the index of any element of the grid, I need to use sample index. This node, basically, as the name says, it sample the index of the element we are analyzing. So now we are using grid because it's taking this information. So now it's analyzing all the index of this grid, every index of any element. Well, actually, not every element, the element that we select here, point, edges, faces, splines, instance, etc. So let's stay with points. Points means the vertex. So this one, this one, this one, all the vertex. Okay. Now, if we want to get the position, we need to select here vector. We can use float, integer, vector, etc. But if you want a position, we need to select vector. Now we get this color and this color because we're going to use position. Now this node, to get the position of all the elements in this grid, we need to give them the position. So, thanks to this node, it's like a map, have all the information of the position of all the elements. So this guy can read this information. And now it's going to give us what we are going to ask. So here, remember, this works with index. We are saying only analyze the points. And here we can decide which index we want to get the position. And this guy is going to give us. So now, if I connect this here, the UV sphere is going to go to the position of the point number zero. And now, if I change this, I'm getting the position of the point number one. So you can change it really easy. Okay, you know how this works. However, if I want to send it in an edge, for example, this one, then I need to select edge. So here now is only traveling with the edge. And if I want to send it in a face, then I need to select face. So now it's traveling in the index of the faces. Okay, perfect. Now, if we want to use another position as reference to say, try to be in the closest point, in the nearest point of this one, then we need to know which index is. And for this, we have this node that it's called sample nearest. So this node, it samples a geometry. So let's connect this geometry. So now it's analyzing all this. And it's going to give us an index based in a position that we are going to give. So let's create, for example, an empty. For example, this one. I'm going to make it smaller. Let's come back to the grid. And now I want this object info here. So object info. Now I'm going to use the position of this object. So this guy is saying, okay, this is the reference. And now this is given the index of the closest point to this one. So probably will be here. Instead of us selecting which one is, now, if we connect this index with index, 
is going to do the work for us. So now this is the closest index of a face in this point. By the way, we need to select face face or point point. And if we move this, you will see, let me select this view, that this is going to change. Okay, you know how sample nearest and sample index work. However, there is a little problem. Look, if we try to move this, always we try to jump in faces because we are working with faces. If we want to move it in points, we need to say points. So now it's in the point, right? But it cannot go, for example, between a point, in a face, in an edge. No, we have to say only go in a point, edge, or whatever. But you cannot do all at the same time. So here is the difference between, I'm going to do this and this one, when enters this guy, sample nearest surface. So this guy can sample a reference position. So we're going to give the same position, the empty. And now we need to select what we want to get. We want to get a position, right? So let's select vector. And this guy is saying, okay, I'm going to sample the nearest surface, but I need a geometry. So let's connect this. So now this guy is trying to analyze the surface of the grid. And it's going to give us the closest position, the closest position based in this position. But instead of the sample index, this is going to use all. So it's going to use faces, edges, point, etc. But we need to connect this. So let's disconnect this and connect this here because this guy also needs the map information of the grid. And now, if we connect this to offset, look, it's really similar to the combo of sample nearest and sample index. However, if now I move this, look, it can change between edges, point, faces, etc. I'm going to select this view so you will see it better. As you can see, it's more fluent. It doesn't jump between different elements. So this is the difference. Let's try with another object. So let me do this and add a UV sphere. Let's go into here and here. And you can see the same that if I try to move this, this is jumping in the different elements. I'm going to make it smaller. We can see better. And actually, this one bigger. So look, if we move this, the object can go between the surface, the edge, the point, everything. Sometimes it's going to stack because it considers that this is the closest point. As you can see, when it's flat, always move really fluent. If you don't want that stop like this, then you need to add more polygons. So let's add this and add, for example, more faces. So this is the difference between sample nearest surface and sample index with sample nearest. If you want to see an easy example, here we have the previous setup with sample index and sample nearest, and here with sample nearest surface. So now I have a grid of only one face. So it's the minimal grid. Now, if we connect this here, look, now we are using point point. So if I move this, the empty, it's going to be in the closest point. So only we have now four points, four vertices. However, if I connect this one, it has more freedom. And this example is if we use here face. If we select face and we connect this one again, 
always will be in the center of the face because now we only have one face, remember. As you can see, we only have a face. So it doesn't matter if we try to move this, that always will be in the same point. However, if we use the other one, always have more freedom. It's only one face, but interpolates between this face. So I hope you learned something new, and if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and you can download this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.